no better elected job in America. I can tell you how grateful I am for the hard work that you've done to make the change that we're bringing to Vermont possible. We are doing things that no other politician or government has the courage to do. And the result is simple. We're growing jobs. We're delivering on promises to get tough things done. And we are making extraordinary progress to make this state a better place to get a job, a better place to make a living, and a better place for our kids to prosper. That's because of your hard work. Thank you. Here's the good news story. This is the progress that we've made in the last two years. Here's the evidence. Vermont currently enjoys the fifth lowest unemployment rate in America. We have added 7,500 new jobs in the state of Vermont since we got elected two years ago. More green, high-tech jobs per capita than any other state in the country. We are making progress. We're on the right track. When I came into office two years ago, People running companies, our employers, were looking down at their boots, saying to me, Governor, I think I'm going to have to do another layoff. I think we may have to do more bad news. Today, the employers tell me, Governor, I can't find enough employees who are trained to do the work for the jobs I have available. That's a much easier problem to solve, and we're solving it together. That's progress, that's jobs, that's prosperity. That's result. I want to mention five reasons why we've made the progress we have, why we've made the tough decisions to get things done that we've been able to accomplish, and why I am begging Vermonters for another two years to finish the work that we've begun. First of all, we have matched Montpelier's appetite for spending with Vermonters' ability to pay. Together, we managed and balanced two more difficult budgets, deficit budgets, without raising broad-based taxes on hard-working Vermonters when they were having trouble enough paying their bills. That's progress. That's important. Democrats are fiscally responsible. We prove it time and time again. We have one of the best credit ratings in America, lowest debt per ratio per capita in the country. Good work. More good work to do. We always have a promise that we would get tough things done to grow jobs and economic opportunities. I want to give you a progress report on connectivity. Vermont, when I took office, was behind Bosnia, behind Croatia, behind Vietnam, behind most of the 49 states in the ability to actually have that thing called the internet work. It's that simple. Two years later, we've connected all but 16,000 Vermont households, and we will deliver on the promise of universal high-speed broadband to every last mile of Vermont by the end of 2013. We're on track, and we're going to make it. That's jobs, and that's economic prosperity. Two, we are delivering on the most thoughtful, single-payer, publicly financed health care system in America, where health care is a right and not a privilege, where it follows the individual and isn't required by the employer, and where everyone has quality health care while spending less money. That's critical. To Third, we cannot win on a jobs front unless Vermont is the best education state in the nation. So what did we do? First week in office, lifted the cap on early child education so yeah. that every kid in Vermont has access to a great start in education by accessing the best early education programs in the nation, bar none. That's making a difference. Woo! 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 Two, from early child education to higher education, to workforce retraining, to making both our state colleges and UVM more affordable. We are making great progress. We have more work to do. Fourth, in terms of our extraordinary ability to conquer real challenges 
I remind you that as governor, in addition to growing jobs, we've managed four climate change-induced storms. The blizzards of a year ago, February. Biggest blizzard ever recorded in a snow state. Biggest blizzard for Vermont ever recorded. Two, the floods of April, the floods of May, the floods of August when Irene hit. Highest lake levels ever recorded on Lake Champlain. The great thing about Vermonters is we recognize the source of the problem and we come together to solve that problem. What did we do? We pulled together, pulled ourselves up in our time of crisis and rebuilt this state better than the way Irene found us. And second, we recommitted ourselves to getting off our addiction to oil, to reducing our carbon footprint, to making a better contribution to a healthier climate for our kids and our grandkids' future by building renewables, harnessing the sun and the wind, our streams, our forests, and our fields to ensure that we lead in small, renewable generated power and energy efficiency. We will be the example for the other 49 states to follow. We'll get the job. We'll get the economic opportunity. <laughs> Clearly, we have more work to do. And while we have made great progress on a jobs front, I want to make very clear that having the fifth lowest unemployment rate in America isn't good enough is not good enough. We are just warming up. Our challenge remains that we have too many Vermonters who are often making the choice, tough choices, because their incomes haven't risen in a decade and they're working one, two, three, four, or five jobs to make ends meet. We are going to continue, if given the opportunity, to focus on jobs and economic opportunities by solving real problems doing things that other governors and the government in Washington may never do, actually delivering on the issues that are going to make us more prosperous. I want to talk about health care for a minute. Listen, we all know as Vermonters, with our hearts, that we have 45,000 uninsured Vermonters. Vermonters who wake up every day knowing that if they get sick, they're in huge financial trouble knowing that if they avoid preventative care, if they avoid preventative care, they won't have to face the fact that they can't pay the bill and therefore wait until they have catastrophic care before they get the health care they deserve. Second problem, we know that we have 160,000 underinsured Vermonters. Vermonters who, if they really get sick, know that the gap between their insurance coverage which is growing at double-digit numbers, will not help them out, and they will face bankruptcy to pay their medical bills. As Vermonters who care about each other and take care of each other, we know that health care is a basic right. It brings dignity to each and every one of us. It brings hope and a great future to each and every one of us. That's not acceptable. Let's be the leader in turning that system back and moving to a system that the rest of the world enjoys where health care is a right and not a privilege. Now I ask you for a minute to depart from your heart, to leave it aside for a second, and do with me what Bill Clinton might ask you to do if he were here. Let's do some simple arithmetic. Because as you know, I am a business person. I am a governor who governs mostly because of arithmetic. Let's do the simple math on health care. We acknowledge that we are a state who on average we are earning the same money we're making a decade ago. This is how the math works. If health care costs continue to rise between now and 2015, three years, the next three years, at the same rate that they did for the last 10 years, Vermonters will be spending $2,500 every single year by 2015 on health care that we're not spending today. Here's a second mathematical fact. 